Good afternoon and welcome to Markets Today. I'm your host, Mbitha Mwema. Today is Thursday, the 5th of September. And you know why that date is important? KCB is going ex-dividend come the close of the trading day today. For the first half, 19 results, the company declared a one shilling interim dividend. Very exciting. We've seen some uh, price adjustments over the last two weeks since this announcement was made. We've also seen a lot of local buyers coming back into the market by this particular stock. And this was before they actually made the concluded on the National Bank of Kenya acquisition. What does all of this mean? End of day today, expect a minus one shilling adjustment to the closing price. If you're into looking to buy into the stock tomorrow morning, you could potentially have an arbitrage opportunity between 9.30 and 10 before the market fully adjusts for the one shilling share that has actually been paid out. Outside of that, um, news that's trending, we've seen insurance statistics, uh, statistics come out at a 15-year low. This is very important because earlier in the week, we were actually looking and considering buying opportunities in some of the insurance companies. The names that came up where Britam was up there as well as CIC and Jubilee and the conversations that we had our guests and rather our experts telling us was the fact that investment income could potentially see a recovery if the equities actually recover over the next 12 months something that's more or less likely we will be looking to see what does this mean for you what does it mean for the valuations for this particular insurance companies now, moving aside to what the Nairobi Securities Exchange is doing, it has been enlisting a couple of companies onto its Ibuka program. Ibuka is an accelerator program where the NSC goes out and gets SMEs or large companies that are interested in going public. But rather than having them go public immediately, it hosts them for about a year, six months to a year, and um, it teaches them what does it mean to go public and, and, and engages them with investors or would-be investors so they can be very familiar with the process. In a way, just trying to demystify the process of going public in the Kenyan market. It's certainly something that we hope will be fruitful because the last uh, listing that we saw was Safaricom, which was a while back. Yesterday saw the initiation of the latest company, number 17, for this particular list, and this is Rentco. Rentco has been in operation for five years. Rentco is an investment, is a, is a leasing, operating leasing company. It extends leases to the government in the form of motor vehicles, and it has also been doing a bit of work in the education sector, leasing computers or hardware related to that sector, especially to schools or educational institutions. It has also been listing medical uh, equipment to companies that are setting up either at the county level or are trying to get into that sector in the private, I mean, to get into that business privately. We just give you a quick roundup of what this company is doing, what has been its profitability, so that you can actually be aware of what's happening and whether this is actually a quality name to look out for when and when it's actually ready to actually go into the market. Our graphics team will be putting up an overview of this company. So you have it there. These are the sectors that it actually focuses on. So health sector, that's CT scans, MRIs, demand, uh, rather MRIs. And then it's also in the hospitality sector, in the retail sector with regards to supermarkets. And that's largely point of sale machinery. It's also been in the manufacturing sector and it has been engaging with the, agri uh, the, the, the farmers in this sector, people who are trying to become commercial with regards to agriculture and passing out machinery with regards to the motor machinery that you need to be able to harvest if you're doing large-scale farming. Education, in digital interactions, it has been riding on the technology wave and extending computers to institutions that want to be able to use computers to facilitate education in this particular sector. And then energy, power and plant, it's something that it's getting into and the focus here has largely been solar panels and extending this on a list terms let's move to the next slide to see whether this company is profitable or not okay we'll probably go to the next slide Okay, so we have the revenues. The last uh, audited numbers that, we, that have come out from this company according to their profile are, are as of 2017. You can see a bit of volatility there. So revenue started off in 2014 at about 1. Uh, 1. 1.8, 1.9 billion. In 2017, it was about 2.4, 2.5 billion. There was a huge spike in 2015 and they did explain yesterday during their briefing at the Nairobi Securities Exchange that they got gotten new government contracts, especially in this financial year. Now we want to Stand, or rather we are making a great assumption that the operating leases are on an annual basis so it looks like some of them were not actually renewed in the next financial year however the profitability has been slightly different we can go to the next chart there 
The profitability has actually been increasing year on year on year. Today we have it at about 300 million and that compared to the revenue that they generated last year is about 10 to 11 percent profit after tax margin. So it's a profitable uh, it's a profitable business not doing too well but then 11 percent profitability the question we want to understand is what's the structure of the balance sheet and where are they getting the funding to actually buy this machinery to actually extend it out and what's the nature of this transactions that's not information that we were able to get yesterday but we are following up with management to see if we can be able to host them here and they can be able to demystify that so 10 to 11 percent profit margin as of 2017 let's go to the next slide very important element there, their portfolio. Again, the portfolio really is tracking the revenue that they've been able to generate over the last five years, but these are four-year numbers. So we have it starting off there at about uh, 1.3, 1.4 billion, and it came to 2017 about slight, uh, about slightly below 2 billion uh, shillings that we have there. During the briefing yesterday, management did allude to the fact that in 2018, they got to about 3 billion, and that's the size of their portfolio. Their vision, certainly a long-term vision, is to get to about 100 billion with regards to assets that they have extended in their portfolio. Whether that is uh, possible or not, really, the, the jury is out on that, but we would need to understand what management is doing. But I think the investment case for this particular company, at least from where management starts, they're saying that this is an opportunity for African companies to be able to list products and remove some of this cost from their balance sheet. When they compare the opportunity with regards to what's happening in the global world, only 7% of assets have actually been leased out in Africa. This compares to about 60% in the West. And they're actually look, uh, leveraging on this opportunity and trying to see if they can be the champions that get to that uh, mark of about 20%. And if they do, because they're at the forefront, they feel that they're able to benefit from that particular element. If you look at their equity, there's one last chart we have there for you just looking at the equity evolution about 800 million shillings and again we keep saying that the profile that they have given us it's very broad and perhaps it explains why they're actually joining the accelerator program because if you're an investor you really want to be able to understand what is the nature of your balance sheet what is on your balance sheet what is off your balance sheet so today we have a company that's about 800 million with regards to equity that's what's sitting in its book it has a portfolio of about two, uh, three billion shillings and it wants this to grow to 100 billion shillings it's generating revenues that are uh, about 10 percent of the portfolio that they currently have certainly it's a profitable business but it tends to be very sticky if you're not able to understand the balance sheet the initiative of what we were trying to do today is just to show you the nature of the companies and give you an overview of the companies that are joining the ebuka accelerator program this is the 17th company the nairobi securities exchange hopes to be able to at least list one of the 17 companies by 2020 hopefully before the year ends whether it will be rent core or taskies or any of the other 17 participants really the jury is out on that so we're living with those financials for now we will be chasing management to be able to come and give us an overview and an in-depth analysis of what is happening in this particular company now, today we are switching gears. The whole week we've been talking about the NSC 20, which is on a 10-year low. And the jury is out again. And I'm using this word a bit too much, and I probably need to get a different word for this particular one. But bear with me, because the case is this. Is this the right time to actually invest in securities if the market is on a 10-year low? Or really, is it going to get worse? Because every time we're looking for triggers to actually enhance valuation on the stock exchange, it gets worse. Case in point, banking stocks. Anytime the finance bill is read, there's always a conversation that the interest rate cap will be removed. And we see a bit of activity on the stocks. We are three years in and nothing has happened. And we still keep saying that there's upside on that. So is that justified or not? Secondly, all the other counters, um, dividend yields, we are seeing the dividend yields of uh, about 10%. That's the best. I mean, rather 14% is what we've seen with the guys to Williamson T. And that's a very good dividend yield because if you compare that to what you're getting to the, on the fixed income, I mean, the average uh, rate that we have seen is about 10% for longer dated paper. If you can actually get paper on the Nairobi Securities Exchange or rather stocks there and get a dividend of between 10 to 14 percent that makes perfect sense but really we want to go back to the basics if there's a buy opportunity on the NSC what are the key data points that you need to be looking out for and where can you source for this as you begin to think about building your own personal portfolio at this point in time Mr. Robert Yahweh who's a financial literacy coach is going to be helping us with this conversation we're going back to the basics and you want to be reminded what is important where are we coming from where could we potentially go but more importantly for you as an investor what are the key data points and the triggers that you need to be looking out for before you make a decision we take a short break we leave with the daily commodities and as always we're running live on our facebook page as well as on our youtube page and that is metropole tv don't go anywhere